The city of Oxford is home to the writer Colin Dexter and his most famous creation, Inspector Morse. My only claim to any small amount of fame is that uh, uh, I, I did make Oxford the murder capital of the whole of the United Kingdom. What's going on? Is she all right? I'm afraid not, sir, are we? Sir, we're trying to keep people out of here, sir. There's a hell of a crowd in there. It was the late film director Anthony Minghella, a massive Morse fan, who turned The Dead of Jericho into the first televised episode in 1987. The very first Morse episode was filmed here in situ. Now then, with the canal behind us, here we are in a short, narrow road, which is officially called Coombe Road, I think. Since I was going to have a couple of corpses here, it is called, in the TV, Canal Reach. My parents were silly. What do your friends call you? I don't know. Moss. And in this house here, number nine, on the right, is where a woman called Anne Staveley is found dead. And immediately opposite, we have an even more important house here, which is number 10. And this is where the villain of the piece, George Jackson, lived here, and he became a prime suspect. The role of George Jackson was played by Patrick Troughton, famous for being the second Doctor Who. Patrick was unhappy for his character to be totally evil, so he persuaded the producers to let him have at least one redeeming feature. He insisted on opening the door with, in his arms, a pet rabbit. And I know he felt, well, I'm 99% evil and bad and wicked, but I'm very fond of this pet rabbit here, which I thought was awfully sweet. And he died not very long after that. And he was a lovely man and a wonderful actor. Yeah? Mr. Jackson. Don't give much thought for other people's peace around here, do you? Here marked the, the point at which, on the screen, Morse and Lewis met together. And very soon, they struck up a partnership which was very valuable to both of them, although, of course, more seldom smiled uh, at, at, at poor old Lewis. But he was very glad to have Lewis around because, because uh, Morse was the meanest man ever with, with money. Another location key to the series was the Randolph Hotel in the centre of Oxford. It was here that John Thaw and Kevin Waitley called home during filming. And here we are at the Five Star Randolph Hotel. Mm. And for Colin, it holds many special memories. Well, here, here, here we are in the, uh, in the bar of the Randolph Hotel, a hotel which I, I think has figured more and more frequently in uh, the whole of the Moore series than any other single place. And I'm very, very happy to be here because they've treated me so well and even uh, as we've stood here drinking with John and Kevin so, so very many times. I see that uh, they, they, they've put me on the wall here, but uh, I think all around the room people enjoy looking, for example, at John with one of his girlfriends in one of the very latest of the Morse episodes. The main bar in the hotel was often used as a backdrop for Morse to enjoy a few eels. Since filming, though, the name of the bar has been the subject of much discussion. The manager at the time said he wanted to call it after me, and, of course, I didn't complain too strongly about that, so they called this the uh, Dexter Bar for a little while, and then I said, this is no good. We're going to call it the Morse Bar, and they were very happy about that. <laughs> The last stop on Colin's personal tour of Oxford is the Victoria Arms Pub in Marston, a place of refuge for both Colin and Morse. I used to write, after the archers had finished, one or two pages and then go to the pub and have a, uh, a few pints of real, of real 
ale. And so I, I never had any idea about characterization at all. These people just, I, I thought I'd make up a few more things about them. But unless you're a genius, which I am not, unless you are, you tend to be autobiographical, don't you? And so in big things like, for example, your taste in music or or whether you're left or right in politics, or whether you believe in the Almighty or you don't, then your, yourself comes through. Well, I've got some good and bad news for you, Morse. We're not going to give you the supers, John. Right. You're a clever sod, but you don't say the right things to the right people, and you never will. It doesn't bother me, but it doesn't do you any good. You didn't want it anyway, did you? No. He was a wonderful actor. He could, he could almost look into the camera and you could see what he was thinking. And I think that sort of uh, combination of qualities. And of course, he was, uh, some of the girls liked him very much, didn't they? And so did some of the men. He was a wonderful friend. Fancy pint? Ah, oh, I'd like to. Yes, yes, I know. I'll see you tomorrow. Tragically, John Thaw died two years after the end of filming leaving behind him a legacy of 33 Morse episodes and a truly unforgettable portrayal of Britain's cleverest cop. <laughs>